Here are the answers. Number one, you can notice that I have the inverse functions in yellow and then the final answer in red. All you're checking is the final answer in red to, for whether or not you get a point for the problem. But if you want to know what the inverse function is, you can see it in yellow in each one. So number one is two and a third. Two is zero. Three is negative three and four is zero. Five is ten and a half. Six is negative seventeen. Seven is negative five. Eight is negative two. Number nine is one. Ten is zero. Eleven is six. Twelve is three. All students in the classroom at this time and your doors shut. Thank you. Thirteen is thirty-five. 14 is 2 and a third, 15 is 5, and 16 is 2 and 2 thirds. Alright, 17 is negative 1 and 3 fourths, 18 is negative 3 over 11, 19 is negative 15, and 20 is 1. To find the inverse of a function and graph it. Here's an example. f of x equals 1 third x minus 2. So we need to change that over. We're going to start with y equals 1 third x minus 2. And we have to swap x and y. So we'll have x equals 1 third y minus 2. Now from here on out your goal is to get y completely by itself. You can even move it to the left if you want to and move the x to the right. It makes no difference because you'll still get the same answer anyway, but I'll leave it on the, on the right side. So move the minus 2 to the left, make it plus 2, and now you're going to have to multiply both sides by 3 so that you can get rid of the denominator there and by 3 over here is going to give me 3x plus 6 and then I'm left with y. Now you have to graph this on paper and tomorrow you'll have graphs given to you to use. But there is a way that you can figure out if you have the right answer or not and put your graphing calculator to good use. So we'll go ahead and uh, get out a video here real quick. There we go. We didn't include the graphing calculator on this because it chews up too much memory. But that's what we just went through. But to graph it by hand, we're going to use this one first. You have to use 6 as your y-intercept, make a dot. And then the slope is 3, so go up 3 and over 1. If I go up 3, it takes me off my graph. But I can make a line there and then go over 1. You can cheat a little bit on that, but I'm not going to give you any that go about five off the graph because you won't have enough room. So draw a line there, and my line tool is here. Uh, let's see. I have to move it over just a little bit. Not the graph, the line. There we go. And then the other one is one-third x minus two. This is your y-intercept, so go to negative two. Slope is 1 over 3, so go up 1 and then to the right 3. Then draw a line. And don't forget the axis of symmetry, which always goes through y equals x on all these problems. So that means you go to 0 and make a dot. I'll have to do it in blue. 0, make a dot, go up 1 over 1 because the slope is 1 and draw your line. Well, it looks like I hit that one right on almost. Okay, there. And then the arrows. So that matches what we had on the graphing calculator. We'll find the inverse function here. and We'll start with y equals 2x plus 4. Swap the x and the y to get x equals 2y plus 4. Move the plus 4 to the left 
and make it minus and you have a 2y divide everything by 2 and that's your inverse function we have to graph the inverse and the original function the original one from up here has a y-intercept of 4 and you go up 2 to the right 1 because the slope is 2 same as 2 over 1 the line for that is going to be this and then the inverse function has a y-intercept of negative 2 so make a dot down here slope is a half so up 1 to the right 2 make a line and then you need the axis or not the axis but the line of symmetry and we'll do that one in blue See, it should be approximately here. Okay, if you have that, come on up and collect. All right, we need the inverse, so we're going to do y equals 1 half x minus 3. Swap the x and the y. That should be a y there. And then get the y by itself. So we'll have x plus 3 equals 1 half y and multiply both sides by a 2 to get rid of that denominator. So we'll have 2x plus 6 equals y. Alright, we have to graph both of those. So for the original function, we go to negative 3, make a dot, go up 1 over 2. And then for the inverse function, we go to 6, and then go up 2 over 1. So for this line, it should be this. I hit that one perfect. See if I can do that for the other one. Probably not. Okay, we have that one. I should have taken it through a little bit further. And for the axis of symmetry, this is always interesting. I think I got it. All right, that's close. If you have this, come on up. For the graph, we can rewrite this as y equals one fourth x minus one half. You divide this and this by the four, and then swap the x and the y to prepare for solving for the y. Okay, so it'll be a, it'll be x plus a half equals one fourth y. And you have to multiply both sides by four to get rid of that fraction. When you do that, it's four x plus two equals y. So there's your inverse. And for the original function, go to a negative half. Negative half is going to be here. And then the slope for that is one-fourth. So if you go up one, it's going to put you here. And then over four, make a dot. For the inverse function, you have a y-intercept of two, so make a dot. Slope is 4, go up 4 over 1. For the lines, uh, here's this one. And then the other one. And then you need the line of symmetry. That should be it.